people in office. What does durable ma- relationship mean? Gets um, con- confused half explanations. Some of them are mutually contradictory. And in the end, they say this will be a matter for the courts. Now, we want to emphasize one thing. Courts do not decide on an afternoon what the Constitution means in blank. They only decide cases where two people with a dispute come before them, and one of them contends for one thing and the other contends for the other. So um, the process of determining what durable relationships actually means is in fact one which, uh, in uh, in this constitutional set of amendments, you are being asked to say, you'll find out later You'll find out when hard cases are decided, you won't, you won't know what it means the day you vote. During the meeting, you mentioned the case of a woman who is caring for a profoundly disabled son. Can you tell us a little bit about that and what implications you think a yes vote would have on mothers like her? Basically, what this case involved was a woman who lost €85 Euro from her carer's allowance because her partner, not her husband now, so there's no difficulty describing them as family for the, basis of, uh, for the purpose of the, the uh, social protection law. Um, her partner's salary went, I think, 45000 the princely sum, um, and they cut her carer's allowance by 85 euros a week. Now, this woman, here, here's her situation. She is full-time, 24-hour carer for an 18-year-old profoundly disabled son. He has Down syndrome, epilepsy, autism, hyperactivity, hyperthyroidism, bangs his head constantly, has to wear a neck brace to stop him injuring himself, and doesn't sleep. So this woman is on 24-hour duty. Um, she went to the Supreme, she went to the High Court and lost her case there. Then she went to the Supreme Court and said, look, this is such a matter of urgent pu- public importance. I need to leapfrog the Court of Appeal and go straight to the Supreme Court to have you hear my case under Article 41 2, the one they want us to, to eliminate. This was last November, the 16th of November. The Supreme Court said this is a matter of exceptional public importance. It said this question has never been given, I'm quoting here, extensive consideration by this or any other court. In other words, for the first time ever, The Supreme Court is going to look at the rights that women, and particularly the parents of severely disabled children, may have under Article 41.2. And what happens within three weeks? We get a date for a referendum, which, as you heard, has been guillotined in its passage through the Oireachtas. So suddenly there is great haste about getting rid of this, uh, this article of the Constitution when there's a possibility that it might actually impact on the benefits, on, on, on the, the case and the circumstances of parents caring for disabled children. I don't believe that that is a coincidence. If you do, I have a bridge I could sell you. So this case is due to come up on the 11th of April. The constitutional referendum takes place on the 8th of March. If that is passed, if carers are, I would say, duped into, into voting yes, this woman's case will never be heard and the potential for them to benefit under this provision will be gone. So I can tell you, And I don't know the woman, but I can tell you, I would bet my life that she's not voting yes. Many on the Yes campaign have said that Article 41.2 means that a woman's place is in the home in that it limits her from full participation in Irish society. Um, We know that the Electoral Commission has said that that, that's not the case and Senator McDowell has said that that's not the case and that what it does say is that the woman shouldn't have to leave the home out of economic necessity. If that article is deleted, what kind of effect do you think it could have on women's economic reality, or mother's economic reality? Yeah. This is a, a blatant mistruth that the government and various other NGOs have been peddling during this campaign. No woman has ever been prevented from working outside of the home because of this article, if that's what she wished. But there is a cohort of women uh, who would like to spend time at home raising children. Uh, and the particular Article 41.2 uh, reference references mothers rather than women generally. So this is for the protection of children and in the interests of children and in the interests of the bonding between mother and children. If women wish to stay at home, I think it's not unreasonable that the state should support them. Um, And that's what Article 41.2 seeks to do. Some people may say that it has never really helped uh, women stay at home and certainly successive governments um, have you know put in place policies that have made it very very difficult for most women to stay at home. We live in a society where it is uh, necessary for most families to have two incomes rather than one, and that is a real struggle for families, and it's a real struggle for many women who would like to spend the years that go by so quickly with their children. Um, 
saying no to the government on this and sending a resounding no vote would send a message to the government that this isn't good enough, their policies aren't good enough, and that they should you know, hold true to the um, promise made in Article 41.2 to support women in whatever their wish is as regards their children, be it to go out to work or to stay at home. Uh, and the government needs to put those supports in place. Earlier on, you spoke about the meaning of durable relationships or rather the lack thereof. Can you make again your point about how laws have to be made on words that everybody knows what they mean? Well, generally with constitutions, you start with very fundamental phrases and fundamental concepts that have developed at times over centuries. So the last thing you do in a constitution is break loose, introduces phrases that haven't really been developed or worked out and upon which there is no consensus either nationally or internationally as to what they mean. Because immediately you're inserting into your constitution a fundamental uncertainty. What you think it means and what I think it means may be completely different. And the government has repeatedly kind of failed to give a, a definition of durable relationships. What kind of effects do you think that could have on Irish law fundamentally? Well, the, the problem in constitutional uh, interpretation is very often you're stuck to the constitution itself. So background documents, debates in the Oireachtas, um, reports from the Law Reform Commission, things that might inform how you interpret acts of the Oireachtas don't necessarily apply when you come to the constitution. So you're left here with a very, very gener general phrase for which Supreme Court effectively has to speculate on what the thought people thought at the time. During the course of your campaign for a no vote, what do you think the level of public awareness is as to the meaning of the proposed constitutional amendments? I think it's extraordinarily low and in fact I would proffer that the uh, yes side are relying really on people not quite understanding uh, what it means, certainly not understanding or grasping the consequences or the unintended consequences of these uh, proposals but hoping that they will just, they're relying on um, the electorate sort of being swept away in a sort of feel-good, um, fuzzy language and sloganeering of, you know, you've probably seen the posters, they're everywhere talking about um, inclusive, an inclusive society, recognition of care, um, none of which has any meaning in law uh, it's, or, or in fact indeed. But what is the case is we are moving away with this proposal away from enforceable rights. And what I mean by that is, for instance, under Article 42.2, which pertains to education, that article and the wording in that article says the state shall provide for. So and that is mandatory and it's, it's like a gun to the head. I mean, on a weekly, if not daily basis, primary school places are found because of that language. They're found for children because there's a, 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 an obligation there in the state. What we currently have in the article is the state shall endeavour to ensure. And what they want us to replace that with is the state shall strive. And that's no accident. They know that this is subjective, it's unquantifiable, it, it's kind of like we will do our best. So they can't be held to it. So that means those rights cannot be vindicated. They ca they're not enforceable in court. So that's the first thing. But also I feel that we have to make the energetic argument. And the energetic argument for me is, when you read 41.2, holistically, it's actually extraordinarily progressive because it's actually protecting the rights of the, the woman in the home and the mother. And it's, it's acknowledging the profoundly important work, the value of mothering and what that gives society. I can't think of any other document um, nowadays, not, not least in 1937 or in, you know, when it was more normative for women to stay at home and not work, that actually acknowledges that. So for me, it is um, a legal safeguard in terms of the legal framework, but it's also a beautiful recognition of the profoundly important work of mothers and women in the home. I just think it's interesting that, you know, this vote will be on the 8th of March and on the 10th of March, it's going to be Mother's Day. So if the government has its way, it will have successfully convinced the Irish people to remove the one reference to mothers in the constitution. Um, and so the Supreme Court did say in 2020 that this provision, Article 41.2, it's being labelled a care amendment 
amendment, but obviously it is uh, not a gender neutral provision and as it currently stands in the constitution. It's very focused on one gender and that is women and uh, mothers as well. Um, but uh, the Supreme Court described it as, uh, I believe the words were rarely invoked, so it, it hasn't been perhaps hugely used in the past. It has been referenced in, in various decisions, but um, I think it's still an important uh, statement of the importance of what only a woman and a mother can bring and the importance of that labour which is described as being in the common good. And so this provision has been condemned by um, the UN Committee on uh, the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women as stereotyping roles. Um, but actually it's not confining a woman to a particular role but it is an affirmation of the very uh, important labour that she provides as a mother and as raising the next generation.